How does the digital stabilization on the Canon EOS M6 Mark II, uh, the digital stabilization being the enhanced digital IS, compare to the uh, active stabilization of the Sony uh, ZV E10? Hey guys, welcome. If this is your first time here, my name is Bilal Khan, a marketer by profession, media by passion. Boo. Anyway, normally uh, the king of stabilization has been Panasonic cameras. This is the GH5 I'm filming in right here, right now. Uh, the sensor shift stabilization, it does an excellent job of, uh, you know, of making sure your image is stable. Canon and Sony have been making strides honest strides in being uh, in trying to catch up to it. Sony, with uh, the arrival of now the Sony ZV E10, Sony has added something called active stabilization, just like on the uh, Lumix cameras. If you were to add, um, if you were to let it know what the focal length is, it will stabilize. The, uh, the sensor uh, will move accordingly based on the focal length that's mounted to the camera itself. Now, when it comes to Canon, you do not have the ability to tell it what focal length is if it's a manual lens. It automatically knows through electronic connection uh, when it comes to digital stabilization or enhanced digital stabilization. But here, if you've got a manual lens on, you've got, uh, uh, like I can put my Canon FD 24 millimeter F2 and it's stabilized. And so it just, it looks great, it looks wonderful. I can't do that with the Canon uh, EOS M6 Mark II, uh, but it will work. So the, today's comparison is gonna be using electronic lenses. Uh, which of these two uh, work? Uh, are they comparable? That's question number one. And, uh, and if they are comparable, uh, can you notice, are you able to catch the difference? All right, here we go. So we are at 14 millimeters. Okay, this is enhanced digital stabilization Canon EOS M6 Mark II at 14 millimeters, so Canon 14 to 20 f2. Okay, <laughs> so uh, uh, now here's the thing: how much is the crop? Sometimes people might ask. When you do enhanced stabilization, you are essentially getting a 2x crop, at least a 2x, maybe 2.2x crop in uh, in terms of what the lens focal length is at. So this is at 14. What you're looking at though is something closer to a 28 to 30 millimeter. One thing I forgot to mention, uh, when you're doing this, you're gonna wanna sh bump that shutter speed up. If you don't, right? Let's say you keep the shutter speed at one over 50 on the Canon. I think it's the same case with the Sony, right? You, you, it's, it's gonna have this weird uh, blurring between the motion as it's stabilizing, which looks weird. In order to avoid that, I just bump up the shutter speed. I'm walking, this is 14 to 20. Uh, this is just walk and talk type of lens. Arm is fully extended out, uh, as you can see here. And I, I would imagine after a while, this gets tiring. Now, this is where actually using a focal reducer or a speed booster actually would come in handy. So uh, as you'll notice, like, I think things are just looking good. For most part, things are stable, right? It's not gimbal-like, but it's stable enough to not make you nauseous. Uh, or not make you feel nauseous as uh, one is moving about. What we're looking at is 11 millimeters with the speed booster, uh, which makes about seven millimeters. With the 2X crop, we're looking at about 14 or 15 mil uh, field of view uh, at f2.8, but with the focal reducer, you're actually getting about f2 in regards to light. Um, and this is what it looks. I think this is like a great combination right here if you're doing um, vlogging. In fact, I would rather s suggest that perhaps a better lens would be not the 11 to 16 from Tokina for something like this, but the 11 to 20, because this is 16 um, in terms of reach. Now, if you're only pointing the camera at yourself, not, not a big deal. In fact, you don't want to get much closer than this. But if you're pointing the camera away and you want to get closer, right? Uh, you would, it would be nice to get a little bit more closer in regards to it being a 20 mil. So this is what it looks like. This is how stable it is. I have a focal reducer burst for FD for the E mount, but I don't have the focal reducer for uh, the EF mount, regard, or EF to E mount. So we're just going to stick to the 11 to 16 and the 14 to 20 with active stave. Let's do this. All right, folks. So here we are, auto ISO, shutter one over 60. 
uh, and steady shot is off right now. So there's no IBIS, there's no lens IS. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and turn on the digital stabilization. Let's do this. And here we go. So this is, you'll notice that there has been a crop. This is a 14 mil F2 Tokina, 14 to 20 mil. Uh, manual focusing for now. Now, if we do the same walk and talk fe uh, featurette uh, or walk and talk thing in terms of what the image looks like in relation to um, uh, everything, right? Is like, is the image stable or not? Um, and this is how it looks. Uh, just kind of doing my thing, making circles around the podium. Now, if I were to zoom this in any further, um, what would it look like? Now I'm really up close. This is a, again, 20 mil uh, looking like a 40 mil. Uh, and now it's still relatively stable, right? Um, it looks good. But the only challenge now is that uh, <laughs> I was just like, <laughs> it's just a little awkwardly uh, close here. Uh, even if I were to focus up uh, with the extreme close up, uh, this is what it would look like. But this is if I've got my arm relaxed, but it's just way too close. But in terms of stability, I think it looks fine. Put my arm back out, focus up again. Bam. The cool thing is it's got focus peaking, it's very visible. Uh, so manual focusing is actually very simple and straightforward. This is what it looks like. Now we're gonna go ahead and switch to the Tokina 11 to 16. And here we go. This is Tokina 11 to 16 at 11 mil, looking like a 20 mil. The Sony already naturally has a 1.5 X crop, which is like a Super 35 sensor. The active stabilization adds an additional 1.44 from what I understand from everything that I've read. And so therefore you are essentially getting uh, a close to a two plus X crop on top of the focal length that you have to achieve the active stabilization. I know a lot of people were complaining about uh, that, oh, the active stabilization crops in a lot. Like, obviously that's how it works. That's how active stabilization in regards to digital works. It has to crop in. Now, the thing is, do, do you lose image quality in relation to like the noise and things like that? Um, Although in this kind of situation, if you're walking and talking, you're not really worried about whether there's noise in the background. You wanna be able to get your picture across, you wanna have a stable image, clear sound, uh, and uh, not nauseate yourself and others while doing it. And in order to achieve that, you just have to be cognizant of the fact that yes, it's gonna crop in. And so as a result, you just need to make sure that the lens that you're using is an ultra wide angle lens. So your kit 16 mil to 50 mil is not gonna be appropriate for this feature unless you wanna get like super up close and really personal with your audience. But, um, <laughs> Nobody wants that. So if you want to be able to hold your arm out, even in a relaxed fashion, such as this, right? Uh, it, it works and it's relatively stable. Now, even if I zoom in to uh, 16 mil um, and I'm relaxed, I still get that close up, right? I want to be like, yo, listen to what I got to say because it's really important and I'm closing up. And then I zoom out, extend my arm out again and boom. Now I'm using an EF lens right now, 11 to 16, 2.8. Uh, Tamron has a similar focal length an 11 to 20 mil, 2.8. So you'll get the autofocus and all of that. Now, just for fun, uh, let's go ahead and compare this to uh, if we didn't have active stabilization, but we compared it side by side to something like the Catalyst Browse. Obviously it's gonna be better, but I just wanna see it in terms of the quality difference in regards to stabilization. And uh, I'm just gonna keep the 11 mil uh, which because that is the makes the most sense to you. So let's do that. This is right now steady shot is off. So you're gonna get the whole hand tremors. But if I run it through Catalyst Browse, what happens to these hand tremors? Are they still uh, are they still visible? Um, and so and even if we do the walk and talk, and uh, while if we do the walk and talk, walking around the podium in circles, uh, at um, uh, uh, let's go without any stabilization. This is what it looks like. And if we do add stabilization through Catalyst Browse, this is what it looks like. So the question though comes in is, obviously Catalyst Browse is gonna give you the better result uh, in terms of stabilization. Um, but, but doing active stabilization is gonna save you time that it takes to do uh, the stabilization in post using Catalyst Browse. So that's what you gotta, gotta consider. Now, uh, can you do Active Stabe and Catalyst Browse Digital Stabe together? That's a question, let's see. 
Okay, so we're back, 11 mil active stabilization. And if I were to just kind of like start jogging, right? If I'm jogging, boom, 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 boom. Uh, and then I add uh, the uh, Catalyst Browse. I'm wondering if it even works. If it doesn't work, then I'm just gonna do it. If it doesn't work, you'll see me in the edit <laughs> telling you it doesn't work. But here, this is what it, if I were to, if I were to be, uh, you know, if I were to run with the camera, and I'm like, hey guys, look at me, I'm running, I'm exercising, because I haven't exercised for 18 months over the pandemic. So, look at me go. Uh, that's, uh, I guess that would be the appropriate use for this. Or, if you're running alongside somebody, somebody paid you to watch them run, uh, or record them run, or, or record them do something, that might be the appropriate thing. So, <laughs> in comparison to if you're doing the same activity of running and following somebody running while running, this is what it would look like if you did Catalyst Browse only. So, this is me being silly and running with the camera. Uh, and if I were to just do Catalyst Browse, this is what it would look like in regards to it being stabilized. So, if we were to stabilize this uh, and compare that to the stabilization of Active Stave with Catalyst Browse, assuming it works, then that's basically the comparison difference. And it is right now too early in the morning. I don't wanna be running, I'm gonna get out of breath. Although I do gotta prepare for a bike ride coming December. Uh, <laughs> um, so yeah, this is it. This is the test comparison of the digital IS with a little bit of Catalyst Browse. That is, I would say, bar none, the best demonstration of uh, digital stabilization, even better than IBIS, in my opinion. So uh, the only ex the only pro the only challenge with that is that you got to take uh, the extra step of stabilizing in post using Catalyst Browse before you can even begin editing. So for some people they don't like that. That's okay for me. I think it's wonderful. Uh, now, in order to use Catalyst Browse, you need to use an electronic lens. If you want to use a manual lens for uh, gyro data stabilization, good luck. It's not going to happen. I think. This camera is a winner. I've, uh, I've done two days of recording back to back with this already. It has not overheated um, in terms of being able to do digital stabilization with manual vintage lenses. I could not do that with the Canon. I can here. So, uh, and the fact that it's a mirrorless camera, I can adapt almost any camera going back to forever or any lens going back to forever, uh, making this great. So, oh, here's a cool thing thing right so let's say I zoomed in right I'm at 16 mil right but I want to get closer right oh hey, hey I mapped the zoom rocker to clear image zoom and voila that's pretty dope so if you wanted 11 20 mil off of 11 to 16 you've got it anyway if you have any questions leave them in the comments below I'll see you soon